All right, uh, good week. Um, good last practice just finished up. We'll have a walk to you tomorrow, but I uh, thought the guys came back from our bye week refreshed and uh, a lot of good work in this week and leaving some, some more things than we usually do to get our guys prepared and get our guys improved and to, to get our guys ready. So uh, looking forward to looking forward to Saturday, homecoming and uh, Big Ten opportunity, bringing in Rutgers. Questions? I guess you expect health-wise, you guys like Reese and Juan, yeah, uh, Reese for sure. Um, not sure about Warren yet. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, Reese for sure. He's been out there every day, and uh, feel feel good about that. And uh, um, most of the other guys too that were, were dinged up. I feel like they uh, got a chance to get get rested and get a lot of rehab in. Get, even the guys that maybe weren't feeling, they still might have been playing, but they were a little dinged. Gave them a chance to get get healthier. Sean sure Riggins is not yeah. sure on him yet. Sure. Yeah, so he's uh, his is going to be more long term. Looks like. Michael said on Monday that one of the things that Coach DeBoer has done a lot with him is basically put him in positions to fail in practice, mm -hmm. you know, give him a, a look that's not right, yeah. a play call that he knows isn't correct for the situation because he's challenging Michael to recognize that stuff. Are there examples that stand out in your mind as, he's, as Michael's gotten more comfortable with the offense where maybe you've seen that and you've mm -hmm. seen Michael handle it well? Well, I would say, first of all, I mean, you know, it takes a confident young man to approach it that way, but I think it is the right way to do it because if, if you – there's a, there's a fine line between challenging and practice and developing confidence within them, especially a young guy. Uh, but it just shows his core confidence is at a high level. He's able to, you know, have those challenging situations, maybe not always execute them the right way in practice, but it makes it easier in the game. And that's what you want to get to, you know, but having a young guy, you're trying to, to balance it. And I think Coach is taking the right approach. I think it's caused him to be able to perform at a high level on game day. I mean, sometimes he looks better. He looks better in the game than he does in practice. If you just counting, you know, catches or execution, but and that's part of the reason why too. Uh, but you, you definitely always want to make it hard on your guys. You're even out there today. You, know, you want to put them in those tough positions and 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 be able to make them you know, either side of the football communicate the highest level on defense, execute the high level on offense. But I think there's no question that uh, that's helped him grow faster. Um, but I also think it just shows the, the core confidence that he has and his ability to, to have poise and uh, to compete and to execute at a high level, you know, even during the game more so than even in a tough situation in practice. I mean, you were mentioning on uh, Monday about the bye week of being able to evaluate a little bit of what you've been doing so far mm -hmm. through five games. And have you impl implemented some things uh, just to... Now yeah, there's, well, you go through and then, we, you know, the self-scout that we did on both sides of the football and special teams that allows you to be able to, you know, hopefully break, start breaking some of those tendencies you know, in those areas, number one, and then number two, fixing the things that you don't like, you know, and sometimes it means throwing some stuff out, sometimes it means adjusting some things the way we're doing, which we've done a little bit of both of those, and so to me, it's a matter of, of being able to continue to, to grow our offense since it's a new system and uh, continue to do things that allows us to be able to, to build a, you, know, you just want to be able to have defenses as every every game adds on to the next, that they got more and more they got to prepare for. You know, more different looks, little wrinkles, things that they have to, you know, they don't know if we're going to do it or not do it, but you have to be ready for it. And so just seeing us build that, I think that's part of, of the, the buy, helped us kind of go back and do a self-assessment of where we are. And uh, so that's where I, I hope that, uh, you know, we definitely spent a lot of time doing that what by design. What about defensively? Because you discussed some of the deep, you mm -hmm. said defensively you were where you wanted to be. Where, where sure. Yeah. Well. We're, we're not, we haven't finished the way we need to finish. And so it's, you know, to me, it's, it's about execution, you know, and that's really what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, being able to make sure we can execute the things that we want to do. And if we can't, we got to find out why. And sometimes, you, like you said, you throw some stuff out, you tweak some things, you make it to where uh, you get certain guys in certain positions that they feel more comfortable with. And, and then also a lot of it's just increasing the rep base of some of these young guys. You know, I just, there's no substitution for reps and experience. And so you create that through uh, multiple opportunities for them to, to do it live in practice. So we try to do that during the bye week. And then also you know, knowing what was ahead, who would be playing, what they were doing and uh, matching those two things together. But yeah, I think it's been a, a constant process of trying to have the right bi balance of multiplicity and yet high level execution. I know as a coach, you don't look at it as who's the favorite and all that, but when you go into a game where you are the prohibitive favorite, what do you want to see from your team from an execution wise or performance wise uh, against that team? Well, consistent preparation, which I think creates consistent performance. And to me, you know, you can use videos, you know, I had a thing on Tuesday um, talking about some elite guys and how they approached um, similar opportunities. And uh, to me, it's about uh, how you prepare and how you perform and not who. And that to me is the biggest key. I know that's somewhat cliche in, in a lot of regards, but that is absolutely what it has to be. And uh, you, you have an expectation of how you're going to, to do what you do. 
and how we're going to prepare to play at a high level with Big Ten football, and uh, we're going to have to fight for this one. And I know that, and I believe that, and I know our guys understand that. So that's that's been the message all along, and we got to play at the highest level, and we got to play our very, very best. You know, Rutgers has a couple of kids that are sitting out on red shirts that are healthy. Uh, how, how do you see the red shirt rules as they stand now with the four mm -hmm. games? In terms of and, and you know the possible manipulation of that of players that are sitting out yeah. for the red shirt. I think there's definitely. Uh, it's created some unique situations I don't think a lot of us really thought through. You know, at least I didn't think of some of these things. You know, I wasn't the one that made the rule up. Thought it was a good rule. Still think it's a good rule. Uh, but, uh, and, you know, every situation is different. And I'm not sitting here criticizing guys for those decisions. But I do know that that's, it's unique. I mean, we've never had this before. You know, uh, you couldn't do it in the past. And so with the new rule, it's created an opportunity where a guy has to evaluate his situation and say, okay, what's, what do I foresee the future holding? And do I want to use this whole year or not? And, uh, you know, you support your guys. I think there's no question. But at the same time, the head coach's job is to protect your team and do what's best for the team. You know, and I know that that's a, that's a fine balance there. And it's a, you know, I'm sure those guys have had a lot of just one-on-one, -on -one, man to man talks about that and, and what they're trying to do. So, but uh, you know, those we can't control um, their situation. But I do know that it's it's kind of the reality of where we're at as a, you know, college football. You know, the way it is, the way the rules are right now, and uh, don't necessarily see it changing anytime soon. So I think that's something we have to have, have adapt to and, and have answers for. And, and I, I do see, you know, every, I mean, you've seen in two years, you've seen it grow from year one to year two. So. There's no reason to believe that it's going to slow down in the future. How would you handle a situation like that if someone came in and said, hey, I don't mm -hmm. want to play anymore this year, knowing that they might be able to graduate and transfer to another school? Sure. I mean, here's the bottom line. I mean, to me, you know, I think the grad transfer to me is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, guys, you know, do. Um, I Like I said, I think there's a trust level. that you guys sit down with guys? You, know, you sit down with them, you talk to them man-to-man, face-to-face, and you talk it through. And, and my approach is usually, and it has been and will be going forward, is that, hey, I need guys that are all in. You know, I need coaches that are all in, I need players that are all in. And, and if you can't be all in, then there's, there would be a little bit of a, you know, uh, a challenge with that. And to, to me, to be able to say, I want guys that are locking arms, and, and I get it, everybody's got their own, you know, you know, in this sport, you got 120 guys on your team. You got a lot of individuals, but my, my focus always has been: hey, when the when the team performs at a high level, the individuals get recognized, and when the individuals put themselves first and, and make it about them, that's why LEO is such a big deal to us. It's we, we intentionally say, you know, LEO is is a program philosophy that it's not about me because I don't care who gets the credit, you know. But you do. Are, we're all in, individually driven, and, and these guys have things that, that goals that they have, and so that's why they get to sit down and just talk it through. And then when there's trust there within, you know, both ways, uh, then you can have a a man-to-man a, a, a -man talk about it. And what I don't like is guys just making these decisions and then they just walk away. And you know, sometimes you don't even you don't even know. You know we, I've, I've been here for a few years. We've had guys who've decided to just take advantage of that and they never communicate with, with me. And I, I have a hard time with that. You know, I just think, hey, just sit down. We'll talk it through. And if, if this isn't the best fit for you, then that's how I would approach it. You know, and just be able to, because I want to help these men grow and say, hey, this is how you handle issues moving forward. It may happen on your job one day. You don't just walk away. You, know, you sit down with the people that you're responsible to and, and who you work for or who you, and, and when you're on the job one day. And, and I want to teach them how to be a man and how to handle it. And sometimes you just got to, you know, at the end of the day, you know, guys got to make decisions. And I respect those. And, and uh, you know, we're going to love you regardless. But we are going to teach you about life. Um, he talks about one not being sure about him. A CO played a little bit more yeah. in the Michigan State game. Is he a guy that's still four game role type, or is it? Well, I tell you what, no, I, I think he's going to be, uh, you know, he's going to play. And I was very encouraged by his play. Uh, very encouraged by his week this week. I think he's a really good football player. That his best football is ahead of him. He's very strong. Uh, he's learning technique, um, and I was extremely encouraged. So yeah, I think he's a guy that uh, you never know. But right now, the plan is to play him. How much has he grown just from camp? Oh, or a lot. You know, I mean, like I said, just a few years ago, he was playing rugby. You know, he's not a long season football guy. So just the techniques and all the things that he's learning is, I think that's why he's improved more. Uh, and uh, but he's, he is very strong, especially in his lower body. When his upper body catches up, he'll be even better. But it's just the technical part of it, you know. So he's improved a lot since fall camp, and, and he showed flashes then. Uh, but it's the consistency is what he's really improved on. And then uh, same with John King, you know, he's he's flashed, and, and he's going to continue to come along. And then CJ Persons, another guy. We're trying to build this. We got a lot of good young guys that just need more reps, and so we're trying to get those guys more involved and help them just be as a unit, just kind of be. A, you know, a committee of guys that can all play and, and get quality reps. Last year was Stevie Scott. Has there been anybody this year that you just, I did not see this coming, playing that well? 
You know, I, I would say, you know, Stevie was the one that's kind of really, in all my years, that might have been one of the bigger surprises. Um, but uh, I, I would say David Ellis coming in here. I mean, I really felt like that uh, he had a, a really good skill set, but um, he impressed me from the start of fall camp on. And, uh, and probably more so in the area of his route running. You know, we knew he was running back, uh, had, had those natural instincts with the ball in his hand, but, but the ability to be getting out of his breaks and how natural he is and how smooth he is and how he reacts to the ball and, and just, just, yeah, he, he's been the biggest surprise to me in, in a positive way. And I think he's a, I think he's a very gifted player. Any, uh, any homecoming traditions, anything you guys do? Or? Well, you know, we just get our alumni back and then we got, um, you know, really excited about, um, you know, the guys that we can get back to be with us. And that's probably the biggest thing. We're trying to cut out the distractions, you know, so we just try to, you know, it's the next big game for us. And, and uh, obviously a lot of great things coming on on campus, but uh, we don't get too involved with those. Tom, what has the experience of coaching your own son been mm -hmm. like for you? It continues to be, you know, a, a, a thrill, you know. I mean, I just, sometimes I step back and just, you know, like just the other day, you know, when I was this past weekend, we were able to, you know, go spend some time together out. Right? He was with me when I recruited, you know, at, at a couple games. And, and uh, just because uh, basically this is kind of really the, the, the bottom line. So if he's going and playing somewhere else, you're never with him at all. So you really got one extreme or the other. And so um, it can be challenging and it can be hard. Uh, and uh, but but I just choose to focus on the blessing that it is and uh, where the opportunity is, is really tremendous for us to be together because once he graduates and moves on and has his own future, then you don't, you're not, it's never, it's never the same, you know. And so I just want to make sure we cherish the time we have and uh, we had a great weekend together last weekend and, and we're going to cherish those moments. You still follow the uh, no football around the dinner table? We do, we do. <laughs> My wife is, is good about enforcing that. You know? and, uh, she reminds us all the time. We don't want position meetings at the dinner table. You know, so, but uh, that was hard for me at first, and uh, so we were. I'm trying to be very strict on and, that. And he talks about going out with you on Thursday nights. Yes. What's that like for you? You know, it's just truly uh, father-son time. You know, and sometimes my wife joins us and, and uh, make it a true family time. But it, it's just a a put football aside, and uh, you're my son. I'm your dad, and let's just talk about class. Let's talk about life, and and. Uh, just the things that, that matter to us, you know, so our faith and all those things. So I just feel like that it's just a re really special time. I'm really glad we started doing that. Do you see yourself in him? Oh, there's no question. Yeah, I mean, I think as a parent, we all see, you know, the good and the bad, you know. So, but yeah, there's no doubt. Some of the mannerisms he has and, and uh, even, you know, my brother even says the way he plays, you know, reminds him of, of the way I, I played and move around and stuff. So, but yeah, it's, uh, there's no question that he gets it honest. He your coach me? Yeah. He does. He, he, he tells me that's what he wants to do. So I say, well, you know what it's all about. You've seen the, the good and the bad and, and all the moving and all the different things that we've been through. So, But he'll, he'll know full well what he's getting into if that's the route he chooses to go. Awesome. Have a great day. Thank you.